I just have to put a few walnuts in here because we're going to have spinach salad with feta and walnuts along with our sort of shrimp jambalaya and our tofu jambalaya. So it's a complicated lunch. Everybody eats something different. But I want it to all look the same, which is what you want when you serve meals. Not as though everybody's having their own picnic. So today we're going to do the most fabulous show about initiation. And the reason I care about initiation is it's the way that indigenous people find out their life's purpose. And I think in this country we have such a problem finding out our life's purpose. So I have two wonderful people. One is Maladoma Somme, and he is a, a shaman from Burkina Faso in West Africa. He started out life in his native village and was taken off to study with the Jesuits in Europe. And he returned years later after taking two um, PhDs at the Sorbonne and three master's degrees at Brandeis. Then he was initiated into his tribe and became an elder and a healer and a diviner. And he's written three books. One is called Ritual. One is called of Water and the Spirit, which is his autobiography, and one is called The Healing Wisdom of Africa. Maladoma Somme fascinates me because he walks successfully between the two worlds of East and West. Now Joan Halifax does a bit the same thing because she's a Buddhist teacher, she's an anthropologist, she's a social activist, and she's an author. She's the abbot of a Zen center, the Upayo Zen Center in Santa Fe. And she started in Santa Fe the Being with Dying project and also a project in the prisons teaching prisoners meditation. She's the author also of several books, three about shamanism, which were called uh, Shaman the Wounded Healer, Shamanic Voices, and the other one is called the Fruitful Darkness, which is, of course, what this is really about, The Fruitful Darkness. Then she wrote two books about death and dying, which she's a great expert. She's taught at universities all over the country, including Harvard, and she walks between the worlds also because she's, on the one hand, she's written these books about shamanism, and on the other hand, she's an initiated Zen priest. So this is my um, source. And the sauce has in it onions and peppers and celery and um, all, all kinds of divine things and lots of spices and garlic and ginger. And this sauce is going to go both for Maladoma's shrimp and Joan's tofu because he eats meat and fish and she only eats uh, vegetables. And so one of the you know challenges of life is that these days everybody doesn't eat the same thing and you just have to be ready for it. Oh, got to find my shrimp. Here they go. Now they're going to go into this sauce. Like that. And so these are two people who walk this incredible path between East and West and the sort of civilized intellectual life and the magical shaman plugging into spirit. So I'm very excited about it today, particularly because I think that in America we have a great deal of trouble sometimes finding our purpose in life, and that when we're drawn to things, we're told we shouldn't be drawn to them, that you want to be an artist, but somebody tells you you should be a lawyer. So I think it's going to be a really fascinating show. I'm looking forward to it tremendously because I want to learn about my purpose in life and I want to learn how you have healing and how we learn how to die. And I just love magic. And this is going to be a show about magic and initiation.
today what I wanted to do is to talk about initiation. And you know, not only because you've had the, the most fascinating initiation uh -huh. of anybody, and Joan has had a number of initiations. She's a Zen priest, you know, in about yeah. three different categories oh of lineage. God. I mean, not just one. Oh, God. But the thing that's <laughs> most intriguing to me about it is that I think you say somewhere that it, you, it's the way you find your purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Haven't you found that Americans can't find their purpose in life? The purpose in life is not something that you find. It's more like something that finds you. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you, or at least uh, to honor purpose, I would say you and purpose meet halfway. Ah. You see what I mean? But you know, the, the, the culture I come from already assume that you cannot be born in this world without a purpose. And so every baby that is born, you start to look at what is it that she or he is coming here for? And this is why it is important to put people through initiation in order that the encounter with the purpose does not happen via a, some kind of authority that says, look, you are here to do this and this, but that through initiation, the, the young person meets face to face with the very reason why he or she came here. Did you find this, Joan? I'm going to get us lunch. Well, for me, it happened in a maybe a similar way, but a dissimilar way for, for me personally. Um, it, I think my purpose really opened up for me when I was very young and was gravely ill. And being, um, I lost my eyesight and I was paralyzed on my left side and I was in bed for two years between the ages of four and six. Whoa. Bobo, thank you. You're welcome. You know, uh, probably initiation in the uh, classical sense um, is a sickness that is sought after. Absolutely. And then um, you heal yourself in that experience. But for, in my own situation, I didn't, you know, I, I, I didn't sign up for getting so sick, <laughs> but, if you know what I mean. I know. But it was very interesting, Maladoma, because, um, well, I think I'm going to take a pause while the tofu arrives. <laughs> <laughs> this is Joan's special tofu. Oh, Maladoma's so having well. special shrimp. Okay. I'm cooking Good. jambalayas for everybody today with that's, different ingredients. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> So in, you know, in Western culture, illness is looked on as a misfortune. And maybe uh, in other worlds, it's looked on as a op tremendous opportunity. Yeah, in my world, that's what it is. But Maladoma, in your book, you say that uh, many, many Americans come to you and ask for um, African initiation, mm -hmm. and that you say, no, you should look into your own life, and the place to look is your suffering. You know, uh, I've come to realize that there is some close affinity between what you may call the organized indigenous initiation and the almost random and predictable chain of suffering and pain that befall just about everybody, whether mm -hmm. it is here or elsewhere. Uh, wh wh what I have learned from it is that the similarity between the two is in the pain and the suffering. It does indeed serve a purpose. And I would like to believe also that the illness that you described having had has to have a purpose. Mm -hmm. It has to have a function. Otherwise, it just won't come like that. Mm -hmm. My sense is that in the absence of what I may call organized initiatory pathway somehow the individual spirit is strong enough to invoke its own initiation. And it's usually suffering. 